Hi, I'm Bob Jeffrey here in China, and welcome to today's edition of World Makers. Modern China is about cultural collision. From Shanghai Stock Exchange to Beijing's ancient treasures, the world's best brands know that to succeed here, you must do more than speak Mandarin. You must understand the motivations unique to this market and the people. Today, we'll learn what it takes to be world made in China. Welcome to World Makers. Today, I'm sitting down with Tom Doctorow, CEO for JWT Asia Pacific. Tom, welcome to World Makers. Great to have you here. Thank you, Bob. Great to be here. Tom, you know what I'm curious about in the context of World Makers? You came to Asia, Hong Kong to be specific, back in the 90s. When you came, were you thinking you were going to be in Asia here oh. in the year 2013? What were you thinking? Because then you were, you know, you were truly a pioneer then. I was thinking I want to do more than just Oscar Mayer Ham out of Chicago. So I asked them for an international assignment. I was prepared for a two-year adventure, and I didn't have any plans after that. So I was just looking for a new experience. You went from Hong Kong to Shanghai. When did you go to Shanghai? Was it the late 90s? No, Shanghai was, it was 98. This was after the financial crisis. Um, and my then boss, uh, Alan Farrington, he just threw me into Shanghai because there was an unexpected management crisis and said, Tom, go be the managing director. Again, I did not expect to be out here for so long, but the more I was in China, the more I realized that I really liked it. I liked the people, the humanity of the people, and I liked the intellectual fascination of really engaging and deep diving into a fundamentally different worldview. If you were uh, advising uh, an international brand coming into the Chinese market at this point in time, what would be the two or three things you would tell them they have to really think about that they may not be thinking about? Well, you cannot assume that Chinese people are becoming individualistic. Chinese youth, even, don't want to define themselves independent of society. They don't define themselves as a single unit. So it's not just about challenging society's convention. It has to be much more practical and helping them get ahead in society. So Nike, for example, recently did a campaign called Use Sports, uh, Yong, Yin Dong. And that is very practical and applied. It's a means to an end. And practically any brand needs to understand that brands in China are a means to an end rather than an end in itself. What do you think about um, digital, non-traditional, you know, the impact of technology on this market from a communication standpoint? Because everything I see is you think about what's going on with mobile, you think about the unique social platforms that exist in China compared to the rest of the world. How has that influenced the brands that you work on? It's fundamental. First of all, you'll never establish a brand with digital, but Digital allows you to deepen engagement with consumers. That's true anywhere in the world. But the thing that's different about China is, is that the youth have a much more emotional relationship with the internet and all things digital. Because the offline world is regimented, it is filled with restrictions to self-expression and identification. Online, anything goes. So the role of uh, social communities here, the role of using the internet as a surrogate of your identity is very powerful here. The problem is that most companies are not set up to harness this emotional urge. Brands should be higher on the pecking order of discussed topics in China than they currently are. So is there anybody taking the lead on that? I think that there are a few standouts. I think Coke is doing a great job. I think Pepsi is doing a good job. These are brands that are real core youth brands because the shift in media scene uh, has, you know, the fact that television has become so expensive and that the youth are not spending their time watching TV has necessitated that these youth iconic brands are much more adventurous in digital. And when I say adventurous, what I mean is not uh, spending their media dollars in digital because a lot of the media dollars spent is just sort of television commercials in front of online TV shows. But I'm talking engagement platforms, participation platforms, the way that you can really have a sustained relationship with consumers over time. So it's the youth icon brands. When you think about the advertising industry and the transformation it's going through because of the impact of new markets and because of technology, 
What's your forecast for Asia in the next five years? I'm bullish. I'm bullish because from even Japan, right, to India, to Indonesia and China, brands play a fundamental role in consumers' lives. Even in Japan, which is a stagnant economy, what a brand has traditionally meant, which is just about scale and innovation, isn't working anymore. The Japanese companies know that they need brands, and they're grappling towards a way of developing them and then using them across all of Asia. Secondly, the middle class is rising everywhere, and the middle class needs brands. So I'm actually saying we're just at the beginning of it all. It's not going to be easy. Operationally, it's very tough, both for our clients and the advertising industry. But I am a believer in the power of brands. Right. I agree completely. Tom, this has been great. Thank you for joining me on World Makers, and thank you for joining us on World Makers from China.